So, as most of you have already seen, the newest update was announced during Minecraft Live on October 3rd. We were all expecting the cave update, but we received more features than we were expecting. Both caves and mountains were completely redone, with new items added to both. Biomes were introduced to caves, mountains got taller, and we even got four amazing new mobs. Let's go over all of these new features today. I'll be your host, Loop Scoop. Let's dive right in. First off, when is this update coming? Summer 2021. And with all the new things planned, summer has never seemed so far. Although this year is almost over, it still feels incredibly far to wait for all these features we've been begging for. Speaking of, the main feature of 1.17 is something fans have been fawning over since oceans were updated. The caves. Not only that, in 1.17, we also received mountain updates. So let's break down what's new in these updates. Firstly, we'll work through the mountains, since there's a lot less going on in this new terrain. We have new generation for a start. These mountains will be taller and more treacherous than ever before. Bringing some blocks with you will most likely be necessary due to how tall these peaks are now. With their new height comes a lot more snow. We are getting a new block, powdery snow, which looks similar to snow, but you'll fall through it while standing on it. Mobs also fall through this block, which might be a good replacement for trapdoors in some mob farms if mobs think this is a solid block they can walk across. Speaking of mobs, this newly formed terrain will have a fresh new face roaming around it. Goats! These little critters have huge leaps and seem to want to knock you off mountains sometimes, so it's best advised to be careful around these little guys. Besides them being cute, I'm not sure if we can ride them or if they'll have any use besides chucking you off cliff sides. The mountain update will surely be an interesting new terrain to explore and build on with its high heights and interesting design. And with that, mountains are finished. Now, with these tall mountains, we hope to see our new cave system sprawling through these huge peaks. Let's take a look at what's in store with caves. Now there is a lot, so let's hold tight to get through all this amazing content. Initially, I was worried that we were going to see a lot of new clutter within the caves, but I'm happy to see that it's anything but cluttered. We have huge new cavernous caves to explore, including large lakes and rivers, natural waterfalls, and their own imposing dangers. New biomes within the caves can also be found. Three new biomes were introduced, but only two were given names. We have the Lush Cave, which can be found by finding the azaleas on the surface, a new plant with cute little pink leaves. Speaking of plants, this new biome has given us a more interesting species of plants. Rather than normal flowers, we have spore blossoms, flowers that can be attached to the ceiling and emit light and particles when opened. Glow berries are vine-like structures with berries that have a faint glow to them. They can be used as a light source, but better yet, they're also food you can grab while splunking. And an interesting one we'll probably see used in builds and parkour is the drip leaf plant. These plants have leaves you can hop on, but after a few seconds, they droop and make you fall. An interesting new feature that you might be able to use to make a neat entrance to your base, or some cool timed parkour. The lush caves are by far my favorite, because not only did they give us all these amazing new plants I can use to decorate my homes with, they also gave us a new interesting mob I don't think anyone was expecting. Axolotls! These cute little guys were labeled as the cutest predator mob. Which is interesting because how can something so adorable be harmful? It seems you can bucket these little guys up and somehow tame them, amassing an army of axolotls to attack ocean temples. These little dudes seem to have some new abilities we can go over. They have a playing dead feature, which allows them to pretend to be dead, which stops other mobs from attacking them. It was also said they have a healing feature to heal you as well. Despite being labeled as a predator creature, I think these critters are going to be helpful as well as a wonderful addition to any aquariums or ponds in bases. The other named cave biome we got were the Dripstone Caves. Now, Brandon Pierce, the creator of a well-known mod, the Aether, was brought onto the Minecraft team in the beginning of this year. I believe his addition to the team helped bring all these new biomes to life. It seems his addition has made quite the change. What I most noticed throughout this update is that a lot of these features seem like mods, something that would never be in the base game, and it's easy to see the similarities between the dripstone caves and the mod Young's Better Caves. These stalactites and stalagmites remind me of better caves for obvious reasons. I think including them in this new cave generation will be really interesting. Better caves had them crammed into a small area, but these caves seem to be bigger and grander than before. The new addition to the caves aren't just for decoration, they actually have some other uses as well. 
the stalactites actually drip water, which can be harvested with a cauldron, and slagmites do damage if you fall on them. The only weird thing I have to say about these new structures is that they do look a bit weird surrounded by normal Minecraft blocks. But it seems with these new updates, we're going to see a lot of new interesting designs. The only biome we weren't given a name to holds a new, interesting mob. Down in the deepest depths of caves, there will be a new biome meant to bring back the old feeling of the first nights in Minecraft, when you didn't know crafting recipes and you needed to look everything up, back when nights were terrifying and the zombies were relentless. This new biome seemed to have some interesting traits. First off, it seems our new redstone blocks will be down there. Skulk growths. These blocks can detect vibrations and send a redstone signal out if something triggers it. These ender eye colored blocks serve more of a purpose besides being used by us players for new redstone contraptions. The new hulking beast, a warden, guards these new corridors underground. It's completely blind, and it seems it sees with the help of the skulk blocks. In the introduction clip, we see the player using snowballs to distract this new beast. It heads to where the snowball lands, but the player ends up gaining the attention of the warding, causing it to shamble over. One hit did six and a half hearts. Full netherite. Six and a half hearts. This beast is not to be tampered with. Interestingly enough, what we also see in this clip is a new type of stone on the walls, as well as a new room that we might be able to find underground. Also, candles? I see no one mentioning how there's clearly candles right here in this clip. I would kill for some cute candles in my builds. It might be a little off topic, but I'm really interested to learn more about our new friend in the Warden in the upcoming snapshots for 1.17. You would think finishing up what spawns in caves and their neat new biomes, we would be done. But no, more was added, and some still pertains to the caves. Thinking back on it, Minecraft has only ever had two ores, iron and gold. Diamonds don't count, they're a gemstone. With this new update, we received both a new gem and a new ore, amethyst and copper, both having their new unique uses. Amethyst seems to spawn in large geodes. They grow on these new blocks. However, it was mentioned that they are not harvestable. So you can take the crystals, but not the blocks they grow on, which will make an interesting new issue, like mob spawners. You'll need to make a path to return if you want to continue to harvest. Copper, on its own, spawns in veins, which they had mentioned that they changed the way all ore spawn. Veins now spawn next to each other. Rather than finding a vein of four or five iron, they will now be more iron nearby. The meta of our favorite strip mining is about to change. Copper, on its own, can create new blocks, slabs, and stairs, which can actually oxidize and turn green. Another use of copper is the lightning rod. Now, I've only had a house catch on fire once, but maybe I'll make sure to add a lightning rod just for looks. Or in case it happens again. Both amethyst and copper can be used to make a telescope. I've never seen a real need for this. Most people have Optifine installed, and just zoom in with that, but I guess they wanted to add that feature as something real in the game itself. These new fun materials will most likely find their own uses within the community over time. Lastly, a feature that wasn't really expected is the new archaeology feature. It's interesting to look back at the structures in game that show an old civilization of some sort like the sunken ships, but now we have an actual evidence of older lore within the game. I'm not sure what more this could be used for besides decor and the neat clay pots you can make. We did see you can get emerald and diamond blocks, so maybe it could be used to gather some early game loot, but it does take some time and patience. All of the new content that was showed in the live was really mind-blowing. Everything caught me off guard. I'm very excited to see all of the new snapshots and be able to explore them myself and find all of the features that we didn't get to see in the live. Hopefully, I plan to make some videos detailing what happens in each snapshot, or maybe every other snapshot. Hopefully, they're going to be pushing out some snapshots since we have such a long time to wait. What features did you guys hope to see come out of that live? Did they miss something, or did you want them to change something? And what mob did you want to win the vote? 
Personally, I really like the squids, and I can't wait to see them swimming around the ocean. I think they'll look really neat. I want to hear your take in the comments on what you thought might have been missing during the lives, or what mob you really wanted to win and why. It's really been a blast making this video. If you've made it to the end, I really appreciate it, because this is the first video that I've actually put some editing into. My channel might have some joke videos from a few years ago, but this is the first video I really want to represent me on this channel. Hopefully, I plan to make more videos like this detailing the snapshots as they come out from 1.17. And if you like this style of video, give a like, and like I said before, drop a comment on what you think might be missing from the live, or what happened with the vote, why you think the glow squid shouldn't have won, why you think it was all rigged. Seriously, it was a real fun blast making this video, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. I hope to make some more content soon, but I'll see you guys until then.